Hello and welcome to this Control Web Panel tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install and use MongoDB in both the CWP Admin Panel and User Panel. CWP makes installation easy. Just log into your CWP Admin Dashboard and navigate to the left-hand pane to open the SQL Services submenu and select MongoDB Manager. This opens the MongoDB Manager module and then we can select the version to install. In this case, either version 2, 3, or 4 We'll select version 4 as the most recent, and click Continue to confirm. In just a few seconds, MongoDB is installed. And here we can see a table with our list of databases, with the database name, user system owners, and users. On the right-hand side, we have an information pane, which shows us the current MongoDB version installed, and its status, in this case, running. If we wanted to stop MongoDB, we could just click the icon here to stop, and to start, we could either click the icon here in the information pane or here in the main pane to start the database. If we just need to restart the database, we can use this icon here to restart MongoDB. To add a new database, just click the blue button here, Add New Database. Then we can select a user from the drop down menu, we'll choose Tutorial, and then we'll assign our database a name. We'll use lowercase to avoid any errors. And our database name will be set as username underscore db name. Then go ahead and save. And this saves our new database. And we can see it added here to our table. Under the actions, we have options to either add a new user to this database or delete the database. Let's add a new user. So here we'll give our username a name and then assign the user privileges. Here we can choose from either read only or read and write. So we'll select read write here. And then we can assign a password. Here we can use the CWP password manager to generate a random secure password. And if that's not strong enough for us, we can go into the password settings here and we can choose the length of the password that we want, as well as the style, whether that's alphabetical, alphanumeric, or alphanumeric with symbols, which would be the most secure. So we'll select that and then we'll generate a new password. Now we can use this icon here to copy the password to our clipboard and then paste it into the confirm password field and save. And this saves our new user. And we can see them represented here in the table with their privileges. We have icons here where we can edit these privileges or we can delete the user. We can also access our users here under the users tab at the top. And this shows the listing of all of our users. If we have many, we can expand this table to show up to 100 entries and use the search field to narrow down our search. Under the Options tab, we can select whether to make MongoDB available in the User Panel. So we'll select this, and then we can choose the option for availability, either available for all accounts or per account. So let's just limit this per account. And here we can select the accounts that we want to make MongoDB available to. So we'll select Resell and Tutorial, and then save the options. If we want to remove MongoDB, we can uninstall here. We'll take a look at that momentarily. Under the Settings tab, we can adjust all of our Mongo database basic settings. Here we have the logs settings, including verbosity. And this is the default log message verbosity level for components. The verbosity level determines the amount of informational and debug messages MongoDB outputs. The default is set to level 0. Next, we can trace all exceptions. And this allows you to print verbose information for debugging. You can use this for additional logging for support-related troubleshooting. The default for this is set to No. Next, we have the log path, and this is the path of the log file to which MongoD or MongoS should send all diagnostic logging information rather than the standard output or the host's syslog. MongoDB creates the log file at the specified path, and by default, this is automatically set to var slash log slash MongoDB slash MongoD.log. Next, we have log append, and when selected, MongoS or MongoD will append new entries to the end of the existing log file when the MongoS or MongoD instance restarts. Without this option, MongoD will back up the existing log and create a new file. By default, this is set to no. Then we have log rotate, and we have options here for either rename, which is the default, or reopen. Then we have network settings, and here we can set the listening port, which is the TCP port on which the MongoDB instance listens for client connections. Then we have the bind IP. 
And this is the host names and or IP addresses and or full Unix domain socket paths on which MongoS or MongoD should listen for client connections. You may attach MongoS or MongoD to any interface. To bind the multiple addresses, enter a list of comma separated values. And that can be entered in the field here. Incoming connections maximum. The maximum number of simultaneous connections that MongoS or MongoD will accept. This setting has no effect if it is higher than your operating system's configured maximum connection tracking threshold. Do not assign too low of a value to this option or you will encounter errors during normal application operation. Wire object check. When checked, the MongoD or MongoS instance validates all requests from clients upon receipt to prevent clients from inserting malformed or invalid BSON into a MongoDB database. For objects with a high degree of subdocument nesting, Netwire object check can have a small impact on performance. By default, this is activated as yes. IPv6 support. Setting net.ipv6 does not direct the MongoS or MongoD to listen on any local IPv6 addresses or interfaces. To configure the MongoS or MongoD to listen on an IPv6 interface, you must configure net bind IP with one or more IPv6 addresses or host names that resolve to IPv6 addresses. By default, this is set to no. And finally, for security, we have role-based access control, RBAC. And you can enable or disable role-based access control to govern each user's access to database resources and operations. By default, this is set to no. If you make any changes, you can save the settings, but you'll need to restart MongoDB in order for them to take effect. You can restart that here by clicking Restart MongoDB, or just save and restart all in one move by clicking this button here. In the top right corner, we have an advanced editor, and this opens the configuration file for MongoD, and you can make your changes directly to the file, and then save and restart the Mongo server. Now that we've set up our database and users, let's log into the CWP user panel to access the MongoDB there. From the dashboard, just go to the left-hand panel and open the submenu for databases. And here you'll see an entry for Mongo database. Let's select that. And this opens the MongoDB manager. Currently, we have no databases created. So to create a database, we can just click the blue button to add new database. And then here we can give our database a name. We'll just call this one, two, three, four, five and save our database name. Now we can go ahead and add a user to this database. So we'll give our username a name and a role. Again, we can choose permissions either read only or read and write. In this case, we'll just choose read only and assign a password. And same as before, we can generate a password or adjust the strength of that password. Generate a new one, copy to clipboard, paste that to our confirm and save our new user. And this user is added to our table. Here we can go into the user options and make any changes that we need to make, or we can delete this user. We can also add more users to this database or delete the database entirely. If we have many databases, we can increase the table to show up to 100, and we can search here to filter the results. At the top, we have a users tab, which we can click on, and this will reveal all of our users. And again, we can sort this by username, database name, or roles, or search to filter our results. If we go back to our admin panel and choose the options screen, we can uninstall MongoDB by clicking the uninstall button here. We can click the continue button to confirm. And MongoDB is removed from our system. If we check back to the user panel, we can refresh our screen and we see that MongoDB is no longer available. If we check the databases submenu, we see that MongoDB has been removed from the submenu. And that's how to install and use MongoDB in the CWP user and admin panels. For more information, please consult the following links. Thank you for using CWP.